Hi there, this is Strokes version 3.0. Strokes is a sequencing workstation that generates MIDI notes and CC modulation. You can create entire arrangements with Strokes. Those arrangements have complex interactions between different component parts. Previously, this was a Max for Live device. This latest version is now a VST3 and audio unit. So it runs in Bitwig, uh, it runs in VCV Rack, it runs in Logic, it runs in Reaper. I'm planning to release a AUV3 version which will run on iPad if you want to hook up to like ALM or something like that and sequence apps on there. So Strokes works by generating MIDI data, it generates MIDI notes and CC modulation. This can then sequence hardware, plugins, effects, you can control like your DAW environment, like mix levels and sensor returns, all from within Strokes. It's similar kind of approach to Eurorack or like VCV or Electron style sequencing where the notes and the modulation are all kind of interlinked and cohesive and they all kind of work together. Similar to like a Eurorack VCV style sequence thing, you can break it down into modules. So we've got four Euclidean rhythm generators, channel one, two, three, four. We've got four uh, algorithmic rhythm generators, five, six, seven, eight. We've got a matrix sequencer, and this is eight synchronized per step, per stroke parameter sequences. This is basically like parameter locks if you're in the electron world. These sequences advance depending on what's happening on the Euclid and logic channels and accent channel. Next, we've got four envelope followers, which is weights here. We've got a module here called shares, and shares handles like pattern analysis and probability. We also have this patterns section here. So patterns lets you store five device-wide snapshots, and we can instantly flick between those and like immediately snap between different parameter values. A new in version three as well, we also have this like note selector here. This lets us store like note values and then switch between them immediately. So one way you might want to use that is you might want to put like the notes from one chord here, the next chord here. Now you can independently move between like the pattern stuff and the note stuff. We've also got a little scope here which shows what's going on in it. Since recording the last video I've actually added a new sequencing mode to strokes which might be a bit more intuitive for beginners so I'm going to quickly run through that now before we get to the Euclidean rhythms. So this new mode step is your typical like Zox TR style step sequencer where you can just punch in notes anywhere in this grid that you want. So click step and it switches from Euclidean mode to step mode. I can punch in some more steps here. You'll see the strokes parameter is gone, but length, loop and shift still have some use here. So length will set the size of the buffer. Loop will set the loop length. So if I set this to four, we'll only get through the first four steps. Shift then can be used as an offset so we can have this big trigger buffer of 32 steps, limit it down to just four, and then shift through it like this. So there's multiple different approaches to using strokes. One of the more common ones is to use it as a drum machine. Strokes generates Euclidean rhythms and algorithmically generates other rhythms as well. So it makes sense to hook this up to a drum machine. So to do that in Bitwig, I've got my first channel, which just contains the plugin. I'm gonna create an instrument track. On this instrument track, I'll create a note receiver. Now the note receiver device in Bitwig takes MIDI data from one channel and pulls it into this channel. So we set the source to be strokes, and then create a drum machine. I'm actually going to use like an 808 preset here. And then if we jump back to strokes, we can start sequencing some Euclidean rhythms. So on channel one, see we've now got note data coming through. So, Euclidean rhythms, how do they work? Let's start by looking at this. So this is like our buffer. This is our... where all of the pattern stuff is displayed. There's four parameters that generate these rhythms. There's length, loop, strokes, and shift. Length sets the size of the buffer. So if I set this to 32, you can see like we've got more steps. But the sequence is only getting halfway through and then going back to the start. And the reason for that is the loop control. If we set the loop to 32, it's going to go all the way to the end and back around. If we set the loop to four, it's just gonna go through the first four steps of the buffer. I'll set it back to 16. We also have shift, and shift moves the triggers through the buffer. So if I increase this, you'll see we move them from left to right. And there's four channels of this, so I'm just gonna like throw in some random values here. This next channel here is our accent channel. We use the Euclidean parameters again to input where we want the uh, accents to be. So if I set this to like 16, 16, 4, we just get a 4, 4 pattern. Now there's two controls for accents. We can set the value of low velocity and high velocity. Low velocity is where the accents don't occur. High velocity is where they do occur. So if I set the low velocity to zero, the only time we're actually going to get a note event through is when the accent 
and one of the other corresponding channels uh, simultaneously plays. Let's say bring this up. We can do the same with the high velocity, we can meet this one as well. So whenever there's uh, an accent, we can get no notes. And we've also got swing. So each of these channels also has an invert and a mute control, which is in and on here. So this just flips the state of the buffer. So all of our um, note-ons become note-offs, all of our note-offs become note-ons. You'll see it here. Okay, let's, let's take a quick look at the logic channels. So I'm just going to move some of these voices around so that I get some different sounds on these uh, large channels. So channels five, six, seven, and eight will play E, F, F sharp, um, G. And that is these voices here. I'm gonna mute the first four voices just so we can hear these. So the algorithmic stuff is kind of complicated to break it all down. I'm gonna put some data on the screen, which you know, we'll see how it works in more detail. But each channel has eight different modes and behind each mode is a different pattern. So when I so let's just like have the the shaker here. So it's playing nothing at the minute. And if I move through these, you'll see each one of these modes is basically a different rhythm. And those rhythms are calculated by comparing the state of two uh, channels. So I think on channel five it compares channel one and channel two for the first four modes, and then modes five to eight will compare channel one and the accent. Again, it's a bit too complicated to break it all down, but there'll be some data on screen which will show. And so yeah, we can just kind of scroll through these until we find something which works. And yeah, just like the other channels, we can invert these as well. So the way I kind of like to think about this is that we have like these Euclidean uh, generators. They space all of their notes evenly throughout buffers. But if we want to get clusters of notes, that's when we use uh, channels five, six, seven, and eight. So while we're talking about rhythm generation, let's quickly look at shares. Shares act as a probability thermostat. It's constantly analyzing the distribution of note events across each channel. Uh, for each channel, we set a tar target designation of shares using these faders. If the target is below the current share, and the current share is represented by these arrows here, shares begins to like pull the note probability down until we reach that target. So it's like a thermostat. We basically set the temperature and there's going to like drop no triggers until it reaches that temperature. So let's set it all to the, the max to start with. Let's listen to this. So we got like a fairly even distribution of note events. If I just add loads of snares, you'll see this starts to climb up. And as I bring the fader down below this target uh, designation, the probability, which is displayed as 100% here, will start to decrease. And the further we are from the target, the lesser the probability of the note going. Uh, like to the extent that if I pull it all the way down, we got no snares. So you now you see that we're, now that we've got no snares coming through, the uh, current designation has started to drop down until it eventually gets to zero. So if I add those snares back in, you see it climbs all the way back up. And if I set it around here, This is where we get that kind of probability uh, behavior. And yeah, the other thing that we can do is we can uh, say whether the probability affects channel two or channel six, or both. So they're, they're kind of grouped to like channel one and five are a pair, channel two and six are a pair, and so on and so on. Uh, that's, that's pretty much everything that you need to know about shares. Um, I like assigning this to faders and then kind of you can kind of create space and patterns using these. Um, it keeps the whatever rhythms we've got going here just kind of it can be kind of like a nice way of breaking up these repetitive patterns a little bit by just adding in a little bit of like random probability. Semi random <laughs> kind of. Next we're gonna look at how we can use the matrix sequencer to perform parameter modulation. Matrix is tied to channels one, two, three, four. Um, so the movement of channels one, two, three, four corresponds to what's happening in the matrix. So I'm gonna select channel two here. We're gonna operate on that snare uh, rhythm that we had before. I've muted everything besides the snare. Every time we get a note event here, this is gonna advance the sequence. And when it gets back to the start, it's gonna reset. The way that we access the parameter modulation, in Bitwig at least, 
I've created this chain preset. And what it does is it gives you, um, so like in live, we have like the map buttons and this is kind of how it works in Bitly. So we have these like CC values coming in um, and we can use these to like map them, map the modulation to different parameters. So channel two, the matrix comes through on CC 21. So if I start throw, so throwing some values in here, you'll start to see the uh, CC 21 start to change here. And let's say if I put like a filter here, And then I modulate that filter using this value here. Oh, one thing, one thing you gotta remove a bit because you gotta put this inside here. Now it'll work. So yeah, on every single step we're getting a different uh, filter value here. And yeah, you've got eight of these, so like you can mix and match them with like tons of different effects. If you're familiar with like electron workflow, you can kind of think this is like parameter locks. So for Ableton Live users, the setup for strokes is made a little bit easier by the bundled Max for Live receiver device. This allows us to use the modulation signals generated by strokes as if they were like map buttons. So here I'm going to punch in some random rhythms. I'm going to assign some random values to this matrix. Now you see we have this parameter modulation signal being generated here. Now the way that we access that inside of Ableton is we create this Max for Live receiver device. This just goes onto like a, a spare MIDI channel. Now what this device does, first of all, it creates these clips here, and these clips let us switch between different patterns. So if I switch to pattern B, you see we're now in pattern B. And you can drop these into your arrangement view to switch between patterns. Um, you also have note select as well, and that lets you switch between different like chords or keys. Um, it'll switch between different stored values down here. It also presents with these map buttons, which is how we map um, strokes parameters to live. So we have this matrix channel one going here. I'm going to map this to this pan in here, and then you'll see as this updates, this parameter down here updates. One other thing this receiver device does is it sends the modulation signals to dispatch. You see here we can toggle this behavior on and off by using the send to dispatch toggles here. With it switched on, I'm going to create a new dispatch, and if I open up the matrix view, you'll see that in the list of modulators we now have all of those strokes modulation sources. So if I select matrix channel one, you see that this signal here is now being sent to dispatch. Um, some information on dispatch up here, but one of the cool things that Letty does is route these signals directly to your hardware without having to set up any kind of extra channels and things like that. So we just flick on like this audio CV outputs, choose an external out, and then there are all of our outputs where we can send uh, modulation signals. So it's basically a really quick way of going from VST to, I don't know, CV, Eurac type stuff. Um, like I say, the process is a little bit different in live, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. It automatically sets up its route and it automatically generates these clips which that you which you can drop into arrangement view or on a scene. Uh, and it's also hooked up to dispatch. So next we're gonna look at weights. Uh, I've created a fresh project in Bitwig. I've created a note receiver, which is receiving MIDI from strokes, and we've got the polygrid here. I'm gonna create our um, chain device here, which is gonna let us have access to the CC values again. And like I said before, like CC 20 to 27 is matrix. Weights is on 102, 103, 104. You'll be able to remap those values in a future version. That's on the, on the to-do list. Let's generate some notes and strokes. And to receive those notes in the grid, we need a key in, key on. So you see here, we're getting this note trigger on C. I'm make a quick drum voice here. So I've made this really simple setup. We're taking note trigger ins from C1, which is this channel and strokes here. This is like a, a pitch envelope for this voice here, and this is our attitude envelope. We've also got this white noise generator down here, which we're controlling with uh, this attenuate dial. The way to think about weights is that A, B, C, D across, across channel one here are like sends. So if we increase this, we're sending that note trigger signal to modulation bus A. And you see that being represented here by these spikes whenever we get a note trigger. We can go inverse, so we can go beneath the halfway point. And this sort of like halfway point here is set by this offset dial here. So if we switch this, if we move this dial around, we're basically setting the initial point where the, from where the modulation takes place. So if I set this to, the, to zero and then I increase this, you'll see that whenever we get a note event, the modulation goes up and then goes back down. So let's assign, let's, let's just take this off for a second. So we've got 
just the offset amount here, controlling it. And let's map that to the attenuate dial here. Gotta remember to put this chain thing inside here again. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's do it now. About there, should be right. So now when I move this offset dial, I'm controlling this uh, value here. And what we can do then, now that we've got this offset set zero, we can say, okay, whenever there's a note trigger, quickly pull this dial up. We can also uh, change the shape of uh, these, like this modulation signal using this attack and decay or rise and fall control here. So see when I bring this up, we get this like smooth curve going up. And likewise, we can do that with the fall time as well. So we get smoother envelopes. Now one uh, use for this is that you can create kind of like a side chain ducking effect. So we set our initial value. Let's just reset this. We set our initial value up here. And then we can use this to invert. And then we can change the shape of that ducking using the rise and fall here. And that's kind of like a sidechain compressor emulator using weights. So let's use another weights channel to modulate the filter cutoff frequency. So I'm going to send this to B. Now modulation B, you see we've got it on like 103 here. So let's assign this to the filter. These weights buses go in a column. So we can actually add, we can get channel 1 to also influence the filter cutoff using this controller. Okay, so switched over to the demo project now. This is what's bundled with Strokes version 3 when you pick it up. The thing that I want to show you now is patterns. This is kind of the final thing that ties everything together. And so a pattern is a device-wide snapshot of all of the uh, parameters. You can kind of think of this as like the things that generate your track. This is almost like your arrangement. So let's hit play. So whenever I make um, a parameter adjustment, I'm working, and I've got pattern A selected, I'm working inside of pattern A. By default, you're inside pattern A. If I switch to pattern B, we've now copy and pasted all the values from pattern A because pattern B was previously blank, and we can start making some more changes here. So let's mess with these values here. So now we've been working in pattern B, we can switch back to pattern A before and we immediately switch back to the pattern from before. Okay, so one last thing to show you is the new note selecting. This is a new feature of version 3.0. So what this lets you do is, much like patterns lets you switch between device-wide presets, this lets you switch between note presets. So we build up the note presets, well, by default we're in one, so this is what we're currently operating on. So if I hit play, we've got just like a simple synth voice. If I switch to two, we can have a total different note preset things set up in here. And yeah, there's seven of these, so we can switch between chords like this. So one quick thing, uh, I just want to show what this looks like, This how this runs in VCV Rec. Um, so using like this VCV Rec host thing, we can host strokes as a plugin inside of VCV Rec. We send it clock signals, that right? we map to like the clock stuff here. And then we use like host CC to get our parameter modulation, and we use host gate to get our uh, note trigger CV gate information out. Uh, I'm just using like using it here to control like a single voice and modulate some effects. But yeah, just as a demo, like this will run in VCV, and having like all of the tools and functions that Strokes now Strokes has is very very nice inside of VCV when you're doing a lot of kind of complex modulation type stuff. Um, yeah, you can also send me CC in and stock control structs parameters, you know, assign some of these to like LFOs or something. Likewise, you can do that in, in Bitwig as well. So yeah, just to wrap things up, uh, Strokes is now VST3 and an audio unit. Um, that will run in VCV, that will run in Bitwig, that will run in Logic, that will run in Reaper. Um, yeah, send me tunes if you make stuff with it. Like, always love hearing stuff that's been made with this. Um, there's a ton of stuff to explore and a bit of good with this. I'm really looking forward to using it more. Um, yeah, having that like low-level parameter control in the grid combined with this is is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy it. Hope you get to check it out. Uh, thanks for watching.